Saint. Yes. God bless America. <laughs> with you. Amen to what Gary said. Thank you. We're glad Danny's back. <laughs> oh, I walked in this morning. I heard that piano. Oh, it was beautiful. Anyway, welcome to each and every one of you. And there's getting to be more. And it looks so good. It's wonderful to see each of you. And uh, I hope you'll come again. <laughs> if you're a visitor, we have some are visitors, but we do hope you... And, be coming again. We appreciate it. After church today, we're even going to have coffee back in the fellowship hall. So come back and have a cup of coffee and visit for a while. Now, since I have a nice group here, I need your help. The church, your church needs your help. I want to ask you to do something next week. Get your church directory, pick out one name, five names, 20 names. Doesn't matter who they are, call them and just say, we miss you, we need you, your church needs you, your church needs your, your prayers, your attendance, and your support. Please come. And let's see if next Sunday we can't get a little more. We've been closed a lot in a long time, and it's hard to get everyone back, So, but we're gonna to have to work on it, and we're gonna call them. I know Charlotte's been calling people in Mary Lane, and if y'all don't want to call from them, you better be calling. <laughs> so anyway, it'll be a, <clears throat> it, it, a nice thing to do to help your church. Uh, reminders for the week, Tuesday, October the 19th, we will have a nomination uh, meeting at 10 o'clock. And uh, on uh, Wednesday, we're going on our out to lunch bunch. We started this before the pandemic, and we were having a really nice time, and then we had to stop. So. <clears throat> uh, if you want to carpool into town, meet here at the church at 11 o'clock. And if you just are in town and want to go straight to the, directly to the Bell Gym, just go there. We're going to, each month we go to a different place. And again, bring a friend, bring five friends. All I ask is that you let us know, myself or Alice, the, uh, how many will be attending so I can let the Bell Gym know. So that's uh, uh, something to really look forward to. And everyone is invited. Doesn't matter. Uh, on, then on a sad note, I wanted to tell you that um, Nelva Barlow, a longtime love and respected church member, died on Thursday. Uh, in honor of her life, an open uh, celebration will take place at the Barlow home on Lakeshore today from 2 to 4. So and please remember the family in, in, their, in your prayers. Uh, that's not Jerry. Uh, <laughs> Jerry had some dental work. We didn't have plastic surgery. He had some dental work done. <laughs> and uh, so he will be back next Sunday, though. And we're so blessed to have our friend and fellow church member, Charlie, always come step, step in and help us and bring us a message. And Charlie, we thank you for sharing your faith with us. So um, 
Don't forget to call your friends. Blessings on America, not only for the pandemic and the people who are not taking the shots, but the ones that are sick, ones that are going to be sick. We ask blessings on Texas and we ask blessings on this church, Father. We need to feel your presence. And I ask this morning that we feel the Holy Spirit, let Him guide this service. Let it be tangible. Let us feel your presence in this church this morning. Amen. The Apostle Creed is in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty from whence He come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Now's the time the pastor asks about joy as a concern. We got any prayer requests this morning? Any sick we need to pray for? I look back at Nancy back there and my heart breaks because I sat right on that pew and Nella sat to my right. She dedicated, he, she and Aubrey, that window over there. Loved her like a sister. With Dish having taken my football stations off, I called her for, uh, Saturday. I called her Friday. And I didn't ask. I said, I'm coming to your house tomorrow to watch Texas play Oklahoma. And I want something to eat. <laughs> And she fixed the spread. Literally, she and Bonnie outdid theirself. There was plenty to eat. It wasn't a lot of joy there, but there was plenty to eat because Oklahoma whipped on us late pretty bad. She was a lovely human, and golly, I'm going to miss her. I really am. I, when Aubrey would be off hunting, uh, she would uh, go ahead and have birthdays and all that stuff. And he called one time when I was at her house. And I said, she said, it's Aubrey. I said, let me have it. And I said, what do you want? He said, who is this? I said, this is your husband-in-law. I'm here more than you are. <laughs> Sweet people. Do we have any concerns? I want you to keep... Nancy in her prayers, she's half through with her radiation, starts some infusion next week. Doing good, good doctor reports, talk to her surgeon, everything's good. But anybody else? A joy that we have Danny back. Amen to that. Mike? Is Mike sick this morning? Not feeling good. Are you? Keep going on our first. Yeah, I worked him to death. <laughs> this is hard. That's my neighbor. I know she's truthful. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, the petitions that um, people we need to pray for for the Barlow family, for the daughter, and for the granddaughter and grandsons, we ask that you cover them with love and appreciation. We ask blessings on Mike. Let him feel better and let him have a long life. I love my neighbor and I'm glad that he and Linda live next door to us. Watch over this church, Father. This next week, let them do call around and get more. We just need to feel your presence in our lives, Father. Be close to us. In your precious name, amen. amen. <laughs> The ushers come.
Our New Testament reading for October the 17th comes from the New Testament book of Hebrews 5, chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Every priest chosen from among the mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and the wayward since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son. Today I have begotten you, as he also says in another place. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who believe him. Having been de designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Today's gospel is found in the New Testament book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 35 through 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, <clears throat> one at your right hand and one at your left hand in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drank? or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but it is, is for those who whom it has been prepared. Then the 10 heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. 
but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Word of God for the people of God. I asked that Lydney uh, do the reading. Lydney and I go back a long ways years ago. We'd go on Saturday morning to First Church in Nacogdoches to learn to be a lay speaker. Lydney's a lay speaker also. He mainly hadn't kept up his the renewals that, like I have, but uh, he spoke to a lot of churches himself. I know him as a man of the Lord. I know him the way he lives and the way he coached and the way he was a principal and the way he was a school superintendent in Newton. He's a man of the Lord and he's, I'm proud to have him as a friend and I thank him for coming and reading the scripture. I was glad to see so many people here. I'm, I was a surprise when I Went over this morning to Homer. They had they had about 20 people there, and uh, had a good crowd. And we had a good service. Uh, Nancy and I, for about 20 odd years or more, taught a young adult Sunday school class at Ferk Church in town before we bought this house and moved out here. We'd have some lively discussions among those young marriage. We had a young pastor at that time, and uh, his wife came to me one time uh, before the Sunday school class and said that after uh, the class is over, could I speak to you for a few minutes? I said, sure. And so afterwards, she hung back before we went into the to the church, and uh, she said, "I'm having I'm having some problems. There was some church politics going on, and she had kind of had her feelings hurt, and she was questioning her faith some. She said, "Where do you go when you when you need a booster? When you need to just kind of reaffirm some things." And I told her, I said, I don't, I don't know except for me, I go to the two places. If I need a spiritual arm jerking, I either go to the third chapter of Proverbs or I go to the 34th Psalm. It speaks pretty distinctly about faith and issues and, and it appeals to me. And I get down some. I felt low about Nelva's death. I really did. I felt kind of low when Nancy had that uh, cancer come up. We prayed about it, turned it over to the Lord, and walked on. She's doing well. But there are times in your life when you need a little, a little booster. I. I'm a Gideon, and when I go to the prisons and they're letting us back in, uh, seems to in two weeks, I think, we're going to have to present a certificate that we've been vaccinated and wear a mask, but we're going to be able to talk to the prisoners again. And I tell those prisoners sometimes, don't ask them for nothing, just praise. Just praise them. They want to know what denomination I am. I said, I'm a Methodist. I just believe in praising the Lord. Let him know that I love him. I'm not ashamed of my love for him. He's sure not ashamed of me. He died on the cross for him. I actually believe in a physical heaven. And at 86, I'm fast approaching that time when I'm going to experience that. And I don't want to mess up this journey here or that destination there. And so, 
I read my Bible and I pray. If you go to Proverbs, the third chapter, it says, My child, never forget the things I've taught you. Store my commands in your heart, for they will give you a long and satisfying life. Never let loyalty and kindness get away from you. Wear them like a necklace. Write them deep within your heart. Then you'll find favor with both God and people. And you'll gain a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do and He will direct your path. <coughs> There's an illustration here on that trust in the Lord with all your heart. And the Bible says don't lean to your own understanding. Listen, He gives you powers of reasoning and you know inherently what's right and what's wrong. If you've overstepped the line somewhere, if you've done something that is not only not pleasing to man or your friends, but not pleasing to Him. And so what do you do? You open the book and you read it and you get right with him, and you pray. I ran that restaurant over 30 years, and I got up 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning and went down early. And now I get up the same time, and I read my Bible. I might not read a whole lot of it, I might just read a chapter or two. But I start my day off, with Him on my mind and my destination on my mind. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all that you do and He will direct your path. I don't know about y'all, but I, I want my path directed by Him. I want to be able to inherently do the right thing at the right time and say the right words the right way when they need to be said. You can get an uplifting word from a friend. I was really impressed with Gary Allen when I worked with him at the Mediation Center the depth and the strength that Gary had. It was a joy to work with him because he had a knowledge about a lot of things and an approach to things that I hadn't seen. There are other people that the good Lord will throw into your path that will influence you. You know, I wasn't a Christian till I was old. Churchgoer. It's a lot different from going to church and knowing the Lord firsthand. I was a church goer forever. But Nancy was the spiritual leader of my family. I did manly things. I played golf and honed If it flew, I shot. I was drinking pretty hard them days too. But there was one time when I had a one-on-one -on -one with the Savior. I was in the jack and I needed some help. I didn't know to go where to. And so I just bowed my head and prayed and I felt a peace that I liked. And I had had two men bugging me for the longest to go to church in Jasper. Sid Stover, an attorney sat on one side, and H.C. Dickerson, who's in heaven now on the other, and they bugged me and said, your family goes to church, why don't you? And I called him and I said, I belong to that church and I don't know where the Sunday school rooms are. He said, I'll meet you on the porch, 9.30. And I started at 54, my Christian journey. Got to be a junkie. Couldn't pass a Christian bookstore without running in and buying something. Wanted to catch up. I tried.
told that little lady to go to Proverbs, the third chapter, and read it. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything your land produces. Then He will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with the finest wine. My child, don't ignore it when the Lord disciplines you and don't be discouraged when He corrects you. For the Lord corrects those He loves just as the Father corrects the child in whom He delights. Happy is the person who finds wisdom and gains understanding. For the profit of wisdom is better than silver and the wages are better than gold. By wisdom the Lord founded the earth. By understanding He established the heavens. By His knowledge the deep foundings of earth burst forth and the clouds poured down rain. My child, don't lose sight of good planting and insight. Hold on to them, for they'll fill your life and bring you honor and respect. Read that third chapter of Proverbs and read it again and read it again because it's solid and it's the foundation of what our faith is built on. You get in the doldrums sometime. And you come to church and you sing a song and you see your friends and you go home and sometimes you just feel like you're not spiritually filled. I've felt it right here in this church at times. But I can make up with it by reading His Word and by praying. The other thing that I told her to read was the 34th Psalm. I will praise the Lord at all times. I'll constantly speak His praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are discouraged take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let it exhaust His name together. I prayed to the Lord and He answered me, freeing me from all my fears. Do you have fears? Regarding a spouse, regarding a friend, children or grandchildren. If they're not fears, are there concerns? Are there questions that you need answered? Go to the book and read it. When I started out as a young Christian at 54, that King James version with them begets and begots and begots and all that kind of got me frustrated. So I went to the Christian bookstore and I said, I need a Bible that I can understand, that doesn't deviate from the Word, but that I can understand. And this is the New Beginnings. It was endorsed by the Billy Gary. Crusade, so I, you know, it's good enough for Billy, it's so good enough for Charlie, you know. And I can understand it. And I don't get lost in the interpretation because it puts it out there where a common man can understand it. In the 34th Psalm, it also says, those who look to Him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow or shame will darken their faces. I cried out to the Lord in my suffering and He heard me. He set me free from all my fears. And look at that seventh verse. For the angel of the Lord guards all who fear Him and He rescues them. That's strong as heart trash. If you can't understand that, if you want the angel to guard your fears and give you some relief and some answers, don't ask him because it's on the way if you do. Might not like it. You might have to change some ways. You might have to change some attitudes. 
You might have to sustain some relationships, but the Lord will prompt you of what to do. I really believe in this book. Nancy is uh, Jewish by heritage and family, and she loves the Old Testament. And she says, I ought to read more Old Testament. I am a New Testament Methodist. I love the New Testament. It's good to be married to a woman that you can pray with and share with. And I bless the Lord for my 61 years with her because she really is the reason we have four children and grandchildren that are Christian more than me. Because for so long, she was the number one. She was the one that got up and got the kids ready for church. And I would get up and get my golf shoes and that way I'd go. It's nice that it's changed now. You know, that we pray for each other, holding hands. We don't have all the answers because we got a bunch of questions. And then there's problems jump up every day. But we know where to go for the answers. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity this morning to share. Hope I wasn't preaching, I just want to share your word. Thank you for the tender mercies you extend, not to me and Nancy, just personally, but to this church and this congregation. And we ask that next week we fill the pews, singing your praises and your wonders. Be with us this week. Anything that crops up, you've got the answers. Let us go to you in prayer and get a renewed interest in reading your word. We thank you for the shed blood on Calvary that we've got a chance for eternal life if we love and follow you. And everybody that loves Jesus say amen. amen. What else is there to do? It's funny, every church I go to, they have a different way to do things. And I tell a lot of them, y'all do it the way y'all want to do it. Just point to me when you want me to get up in the pulpit. <laughs> okay. Got to uh, do the invitation to Christian discipleship. If anybody got any prayer requests, wants to come down, I'd be glad to pray with them. I'm good at that. I might not be that good at speaking, but I'm good at praying. Jerry will be here next week, hopefully. It's funny, I called Alice two weeks ago and I said, where is Mount Enterprise? I drove about 90 miles and went up and spoke to that church. It had been destroyed by her uh, tornado that came through. And they were meeting in the fellowship hall. They had about 15, 20, I guess. So I have been traveling a good bit. Dick just dials 698 Charlie and away I go. <laughs> I'm proud to do it. So, Danny, you ready to... Of the Lord is in this place I can feel his mighty 